Well, certainly looking forward to uh, this week. And, uh, you know, just told the kids, two-thirds done with our, our regular season. And, um, you know, it's, it's how we finish. And you finish by getting better. Good teams get better. And we got to, as coaches, give them areas that they can get better on. And they've got to focus on that, champion that, and, and look forward to playing this week against uh, – you know, a team that got a lot of respect for and how they're playing and, and what they're doing. And, and we need to have a great week of preparation to give ourselves the best chance this week. Jeff, all injuries are obviously a part of the game. Your team has experienced its fair share this season. Um, what are the traits necessary for, for Wisconsin to be able to, to weather that? Or what are the things you've seen um, that they've been able to overcome that so far? Well, I think, you know, every every team is going through that right now. and. You know, we've got a, a group that, you know, a lot of the guys that's on the famous list that you get, you, you know, just see how the see how the week goes. And uh, a lot of them were doing uh, stuff today, uh, everyone. But, you know, today is a, a different type of practice than tomorrow. And, and um, I think that you have to, you know, guys have to step up and, and opportunities come their way and, and, you know, other players and, and, other starters got to carry a little bit different load, and and so I think that it, you know you try to spread it out, but um, you know when a guy is banged up, then other guys get opportunities, and and that's where if you can get you know contributions from those others. Yeah, that was big last week. You know Tyler Johnson, you know comes up with a big play, and you know I thought Garrett Groshek came in and, and gave us some juice. I think KP's been doing a nice job coming in, and so. Um, Everyone's got to own it, and that's why it it, it takes a team. And and you know, we're probably no different than any other football team in the in the country. Paul, you said that this team has to get better down the stretch. That good teams do. What's the number one area that I don't want to say concerns you, but you, when you pinpoint it, you say we really need to improve in this area overall. Is it the offensive consistency? Well, I think it's it, it comes down to, and even when you talk about offensive. Defense of any any consistency, it's execution. So it's consistency in the execution, and um, y you know it's it, it can be. You, if you take a look at the last game, you know you got two drops on third down. That changes your drives, and you know defensively, you know are we containing when we need to contain, or, you know, all, all the, so I think it's just going back and I think the focus has to be on how do you play better football and better football leads to more consistency. Tom. Paul, how's your offensive line changed from two years ago to now? I think it's changed considerably. And uh, I think if you look at, you know, Michael Dieter and, and Bo Benchwell who were, on that, and, and you just think of the growth that they've had. Um, I guess you think Michael's playing in another position, you know. But I think that there's, uh, I think their approach, understanding of the game changes, and and I think that they've done a nice job of kind of setting the tone um, for the younger players. You know, I think that David Edwards is two years ago. David Edwards was, I think, still at tight end. You know, and I think he's now getting comfortable with playing the position, and and I think it's certainly the playing part, but then it's the how to prepare for and and what to do and and how to counteract different things that you're getting, and and so I think you know they've been with Rudy now that much longer, and I think that they're just getting they're growing and with age and experience, and I think that helps us overall, and I think that that can then give a guy like Tyler Biotic, you know, kind of a – can fast-track him a little bit because they're with him and they can – this is how you got to approach They can pass it on. So I think it's been – I've liked the, the work they've put in. You appreciate that. And I think it's – you know, they're more consistent and I think we're better line than we were two years ago. Is it back to being a, a line of how you envision a Wisconsin offensive line to be? I think we're getting there. You know, I think we're getting there. Well, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, what did you What did you see in Garrett Groshek that uh, made you think he could uh, he could be a good running back? And uh, <clears throat> are you surprised at all how uh, quickly he's made that uh, 
transition? Well, certainly, uh, you know, we're excited when when Garrett chose to come here, and uh, and at that time, you saw a you know, guy with the ball in his hands all the time, and what he was going to be when he got here, uh, weren't sure, right? We knew he was a good football player, and you know, I think from the time he came in, and, and he's always been a worker, and then this spring when he switched over running back, you know, he did things in spring ball that you felt like, okay, this is a good spot for him. And then he just continues to work. And, and when he gets opportunity, he, he makes the most of it and he, he takes coaching. And therefore, I think he continues to improve. Yeah. Paul, with the first uh, playoff rankings coming out tomorrow, I mean, how much do perceptions of Wisconsin matter to you? And do you look at these next four weeks as a way to influence those perceptions, whatever? whatever they may be? The only thing that really matters and that you try to influence is, is your players and how can we make the most of the moments we're in and how can we continue to get better as a football team. That, and that, is, that takes a ton of energy, and that's where I think all of our focus needs to go. Jeff? Paul, I know Cephas is listed with a head injury. I'm just curious. I think the obvious question is, do you think that it occurred on the helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit the targeting call in the game there? Do you know? I don't know. You know, and in, in, in going through, I mean, Q was, he was really good during the game. You know, you, you go and you see him and you talk and we did some stuff uh, on the sideline and at halftime that you know, kind of changes and all that. So, um, I mean, you could, obviously that was a play that he was involved in, but um, I don't know because he was really good all game. Uh, Kendrick Pryor's impact since he's come back. How quickly did you think it took him to, to get back into uh, game shake, shape after his um, accident? And, and what value has he brought to this wide receiver unit in these last few weeks? I thought he's brought a ton of value. And, uh, you know, KP brings energy, and uh, and he's been good. And, it's, and as he's had plays come his way and made them, I think that gives him confidence, which helps you – in your in your growth and and so I think I don't know how long it took. Um, you know I think everyone's still. I mean certainly in game shape. You know physically and he did a good job of. You know working back through that, but you know it certainly takes time to get to the timing down and and, and going. But it was. Uh, I don't know exactly. Chris, coach, I don't think that you're on Twitter, but a lot of folks were calling for. Michael Dieter to perhaps be considered for the Heisman after Saturday. How much sleep did you lose trying to come up with some plays for him yesterday? And did he earn the right to get the ball more? He's we got to keep getting to be a better tackle. <laughs> it's got to be close to time, doesn't it? No, 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 <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> he's, he's coming after me. Um, you, you mentioned Indiana, and in the past they haven't been known as a defensive team, but it looks like Tom Allen has change that culture down there. What differences do you see from the previous versions that you've coached against defensively? You know, really it's, you know, we didn't, we haven't played them the last two years and, uh, and certainly you do see a really good defense right now. And, um, and you saw that last year, you know, you're paying a little bit of attention last year to it, but hard to compare because that was, shoot, that's six, seven years ago that we played them, but I think that's, you know, I think they've, I think when you have a good defense or what looks to be a good defense, it's, is it sound, you know, that they don't give you anything. And, and, and I see that in this defense. And then you watch them, are they playing fast? You know, are they playing physical? To me, that means that the players understand what they're doing. They trust what they're doing and they go play fast. And those are the things that you see from their defense, you know that a good defense doesn't give you anything. You've got to go earn it, and and that's where I think that they're. When you put on the tape, you see that that's. You you watch you say that's a really good defense. For some reason, people seem to want to talk about your schedule this year a lot. Um, how has has the nine game Big Ten season changed your ability to schedule non conference games? I, absolutely, I think it, it it impacts it, and yet. Um, you know, the, I've always been 
you know, and I think Coach Alvarez feels the same way. I mean, we've played – you want to play a lot of teams, and, and I'm proud of, you know, the first game I was here, we played Alabama. And, you know, last year we opened up with LSU. And that – and you knew it when we were playing those. Like, these are – I remember talking to the kids about These are really neat opportunities. They don't come around all the time. And so, therefore, you want to appreciate that and enjoy it and be into it. And then, you know, with the, the conference – with the nine games, you know, obviously there's one less non-conference that you you can schedule, and so um, every year you, you look at the schedule and you, you appreciate what you have, and you want to make sure your team makes the most of it. And uh, and I've always felt that we've tried to do a good job of challenging ourselves with it, and you want players to appreciate the opportunities that you get. Are those intersectional type games big? Big intersectional type games that you played with LSU and Alabama, getting harder to schedule though. Well, I think they are, you know, and I think everyone sees the value in them, and and so when you get them, you're really, I think your players love them, and and you know that's the when you can play someone of you know high caliber, those are great opportunities because they're they're hard and they're challenges, and so. Um, I think a lot of people want to be in those games, and that's why you're thankful when you are a part of them. Paul, your your cornerbacks have talked about the fact that they are they're eager to be challenged this year, and I'm just curious when you look at Indiana's Cobbs, and do you expect that he's one? They've got several guys who can catch the ball, but what kind of challenges will he present against your secondary? I think that you know this team. It's kind of fun, you know, as you go through the season. Uh, I think there's been games before we felt challenged, and I think this one's. A little bit different than any we've had, you know. Whether it's the, you know, the physical size, and then I think you add the the scheme part to it, and I think, you know, I think they do a great job in the slots, you know. So I think that across the board, you know, this may present as big a challenge as we have with the style of their offense and their ability to run the football, and and not just, I mean, they they commit to that. You've got to play really sound defense, and, and certainly it will be a challenge for our guys. I know they're looking forward to it um, because they know it's going to be a challenge. 